Today I'm going to be teaching you how to perform object detection with an autonomous driving trained neural network. Let's start off with the software configuration. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our Raspberry Pi is up to date. So to run this, we're going to do sudo apt git update and sudo apt git upgrade. I already ran this, so this runs pretty quickly for me, and it may take longer for your system. Just give it um, a couple seconds, a couple minutes, however long it takes. And if it asks you if you want to continue, type Y, hit enter. Cool, so we're done with that step. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is clone the repository, which I have a link to in the video description. So I'm just going to type that link in really quick. It's the RPI road object detection .git repository. Give that a little bit to clone. And now we're going to change directory into the repository we just cloned. And so you may see files that look like this. The next thing we're going to do is install uh, virtual env, which is going to allow us to create a Python virtual environment. This will allow us to keep our dependencies for this project separate from other projects on our system. I already have it installed, so that went quickly for me. Now I'm going to check my Python version. So my Python version is currently Python 3.4. And when I tested this, that didn't work so well, so I'm going to use Python 3.7 to actually create my virtual environment with the following command. And again, all these commands are in the GitHub page in the video description. So yeah, again, I'm using Python 3.7 and I'll create my environment. And as we can see, I made an environment for that, uh, or a directory for that environment. So now we are going to activate this virtual environment by running source tflight env bin activate. And as you can see, it puts a little parentheses to the left of the command prompt showing that our environment is activated. To deactivate this environment, you just type deactivate. And now things are back to normal. And now I'm going to reactivate my environment again. So the next step is to install the dependencies for this project. And I wrote a bash script to do all this for you. And essentially what we're installing are is a GPIO Python package, OpenCV, and also TensorFlow, which are all things needed for this project. And since I already have all these installed, it runs pretty quickly for me, but it may take a little longer for you. Just give it a little time to run through. And then after everything runs successfully, we are ready to go look at um, configuring the camera module for the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to type in sudo raspi hyphen config. Go to interface options. And click enter on the camera. Click enter. Tab enabled, enter again and then tab over to finish, and you're done with that part. All right, so for this project, I'm using the Raspberry Pi camera module. And real quick, I'm gonna show you how to connect that module to your Raspberry Pi 4. So as you can see on the Raspberry Pi 4, there's a little slot 
right here, and that's where we're going to be placing the camera. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull this little black banister up, like so. Mine's already up. And then now you take your camera module, and with these little metal, metal tabs facing this direction, we're going to plug that into the Pi. So it should stick in there nicely, and then press the little black banister down to secure it in place. And now your camera module will be attached to the Pi. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to hook an LED up to the Pi so we can get some visual feedback while we're running our program and images are being processed. If you already know how to do this, you can skip ahead. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a 470 ohm resistor and connect it to the breadboard first. Like so. Then take this LED, and as you can see, the long end is a little longer on the left. So I'm going to put that long end in the breadboard at the back of the resistor, like so. And the next step is to hook up uh, GPIO jumpers to the Pi. So I'm going to take the top of the resistor here, run this wire to GPIO pin 4. Just going to be four down from the top left. One, two, three, four. And connect that like so. And then the last thing we have to do is connect the back of the LED like so to the ground of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to connect it one, two, three down from the top right of the Raspberry Pi, like so. And now we have our LED configured. Okay, so now I'm going to connect the push button to the breadboard as well with some jumper wires so that we have a way to start our program. So I'm going to place the push button in the Pi, like so. I said that breadboard, like so. And now I'm going to run the top pin of the button to GPIO pin 17 on my Raspberry Pi. So that's going to be 6 down from the top left. I'm just referencing a diagram when I put these in. And then take the bottom pin of this GPIO button and run that to ground as well. So I'm just going to use the bottom leftmost GPIO pin like so and now all of our hardware is configured. Alright so I have my Pi configured right now and the program is running so now if I just push the GPIO button here this green LED turns on indicating that uh, images are being taken, processed, and saved and then if I press the button it stops the processing. But if I want to start it again, I just press the button again and it will continue. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what the video I just showed you looks like on the software side. So first I'm going to show you the script and the arguments that it expects. So it's going to expect a monitor which contains your neural network and an output path which is where it's going to save process images. So we're going to do python tflight detection webcam loop.py and then we're going to specify the model there as the tflight model bbd. And then our output path is going to be wherever we want to save the processed images to. So I'm just going to call this saved images, for instance. Now when I run this, it says waiting for a button push and then as you saw in the previous video, when the LED turns on, that means it's recording. And then when I stop the LED, it says saved images to a timestamp folder. And so it's running again. And now I press the button again, and it saved out another instance of processed images. 
And so that's how things look on the software side while it's running. And I'm just going to press Control Z to stop that. And now we're going to look at the output path and take a look at where our images were saved. So as you can see, each time uh, the button was toggled, a new timestamp directory was made that contains images. Uh, ignore that command I ran. Um, it, it was pretty much useless, but now I'm going to go into one of the directories. And as you can see, it saved a bunch of processed images out, just as we'd like. Now, before I put this in my car, I'm going to make sure that this Python script runs on boot. So I'm going to go into the bash RC file and go all the way to the end. And I'm going to add a couple lines here to get things to run when the Pi boots. So I don't have to use a keyboard and mouse and interact with it at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is to change directory into the uh, repository that I cloned. After that step, I'm going to activate the virtual environment that we made. And instead of TF Lite V E N V, just call it TF Lite E N V bin activate. That's my bad. And then the last line of code is going to be the command that actually runs the script and specifies which neural network model it's going to use and where to save the images to. So we'll just write that out like so. Yeah, call the TF Flight Detection Webcam Loop script. Specify the model, which would be the TF Flight model BBD for the BBD dataset it was trained on. And then specify the output path as well. And this time I'm just going to call it processed images. So once we're done making all of our changes to the bash RC, press control X and then press Y to save those changes. Here I am in my car. I have my Pi plugged into my AC outlet and I have everything configured right on my dashboard with the camera. And now when I'm driving, all I have to do is press that push button and it will start recording footage. With the processed images, so they will go. be saved out into the output path you specified like so. You can collect these images into a GIF or make them into a video if you'd like. Once you have done all that, you can get a GIF like shown. I hope you had fun doing this project and learned something new.